Hey, good afternoon, folks. Got a little break from harvest yet again. We are switching fields today, and because we're so close to where we're dropping the corn off in the bin, one driver is able to keep up. So my cousin's going to handle that this afternoon until they get the field opened up. So I'm home, which is uncommon on the afternoon. So because I'm home, we're going to whip some dinner together for Kelly so she doesn't have to worry about that when she gets home. So stick around. I'll show you what we're going to make. Pretty good stuff. So I'm going to make one of well, my favorite things for supper, and that is a good meatloaf. And if you've had our meatloaf recipe that we shared on this channel, you know how good it is. But we're going to put a different little spin on it tonight. I'm going to do little individual meatloafs. So we'll each have one for dinner. And then also for lunch tomorrow, I can take mine with me in like a meatloaf sandwich with some of Kelly's homemade bread. Ah, almost can't wait for that. But... Those individual meatloafs I've made before, just haven't done a video on it. What's good about it is, you know, the best part of meatloaf is the outside kind of crusty part and the sauce. Well, when you're cooking it this way, little individual meatloafs, everybody's got that little crusty outside part. And everybody's got the sauce on the top instead of it just being like little slices. So this is going to come out good. You're going to love this recipe. I encourage you to try it. So pitter-patter, let's get at her. In our mixing bowl goes one pound of our good Nebraska ground beef. You can use any ground meat you want for this. Uh, you can also mix meats. You can go with lamb and beef or just lamb, whatever you want. This will be good, this recipe, for about a family of four when you're having other dishes with it, like mashed potatoes or whatever. But uh, if you like bigger portions, you can double up the recipe real easy. To our meat mixture, we're going to add some Ritz crackers, right, Ruby? Now, sometimes you, the little snack size will be like a half a sleeve. That's the size that you want. If you have those, just smash them right in the package. But for the long, regular sleeves of crackers, we're going to have to take half of them out, and I'll just smash them in a little bowl and throw them in there. All right, there we go. Comes out to about one cup. So if you're using something else like seasoned breadcrumbs or whatever, regular saltine crackers just comes out to a cup throw them in there next thing in is half a cup of either white or yellow onion then goes in one large egg and quick tip if you crack your egg on a paper towel you don't get that nasty little eggy wet spot on your counter two tablespoons of ketchup one tablespoon of what's this here sauce. One teaspoon of dry parsley. If you're using fresh, you would need three teaspoons. Then you need three quarter teaspoon of salt because this is kosher salt. We're gonna go with a full teaspoon because of the bigger granules. Next is two cloves worth of minced garlic. If you don't have minced garlic or fresh garlic, this is equal to about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. One quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Freshly ground probably would be preferred, but this stuff's pretty good. Now for the meatloaf itself, that is all the ingredients. So... Let's get this mixed up, and there's no better mixer than a good, clean hand. Okay, folks, there is our mix. If you want to get your kids involved in helping you and cooking in the kitchen, that is the perfect operation right there. Get it, Let them get their hands in there and mix that up. They will absolutely love that. So now we're going to go preheat our oven to 350 degrees, and we'll finish this stuff up. So our oven is preheating, so get you a roaster pan. This is the one I like using right here. 
the two-piece pan. You can use this pan just by itself or uh, a roaster rack goes on top of it. Now, most people cook meatloaf in like a loaf pan, but it's just swimming in its own grease and the sides and the bottom don't get crispy. If you cook it in a broiler pan like this or roasting pan or a pan with a rack in it, all the way around that meatloaf will have the nice brown crust on it and it's not going to be swimming in grease. The grease has got actually drained through these holes down into that pan. Now you can save that grease to make like a gravy to go over the top if you want it, but we're just going to discard it. So spray your pan, that way everything doesn't stick. It's a lot easier to clean. After you have sprayed your pan, get your fingers in there and divide your meatball into four separate pieces. And this will be our individual pieces of meatloaf. Get them in your hand, roll them into a ball real nice, and then squeeze them out into like maybe like a football shaped patty. And then arrange them separately on your baking surface. There is our individual little meatloafs. I do them kind of oblong for two reasons. One, they fit on a sandwich really well when you're eating the leftovers. Two, it doesn't look like you're just eating an old hamburger patty when you're eating it. So now that this part is done, let's work on the sauce that goes on top of these that just really does the magic. First item for our sauce is one quarter cup of ketchup or four tablespoons. Next thing is two tablespoons or one eighth of a cup if you have one of those like I do of packed brown sugar. Next thing is one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. If you don't have red wine vinegar, you could use cider vinegar, regular vinegar, whatever. As long as it's vinegar, I don't recommend balsamic because it would be too sweet. But vinegar, one tablespoon. Now this sauce is the star of the show, believe me. So what we're going to do is we're going to evenly split this sauce up between all of our little individual meatloafs there. Making sure we got about the same on each. And if you were doing just a big meatloaf, you would just pour this over the whole thing. A little more on that one. And I think we got it. I'll rake the rest out of that there in a second. We take our little brush. Cover the whole top of all of our meatloafs. Try not to waste any of it going over the down into the pan and this will kind of caramelize on the top as it cooks some of your meatloaf re meatloaf recipes will call to put the sauce on later on in the cooking process but this recipe you put it on right in the beginning so we're going to get this into our 350 degree oven Now that meatloaf is going to stay in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes depending on your oven. Uh, you don't want to overcook it. Now if you made it into like a full big meatloaf, you'd probably need to go about 55 minutes to an hour. Check it at 55 minutes. Uh, you want to be around 150, 160 degrees internal on that. There they are folks. Don't those look delicious? Now there's several ways to know when they're done. One of them is just to touch them, and if they're firm, like that, they're done. The other way is you could go to an internal temp of about 150, or like the old school people did back in the day, when you can smell it in the kitchen, it means it's done. Now I like my meatloaf nice and juicy, so I do stop at 150 if I'm using a thermometer, which I very rarely do. If you like it more well done, go to like 160. Well, Kelly's going to be home in about an hour or so, and we'll have supper. Well, change of plans. Kelly's off tomorrow, so we're going to take advantage and go to dinner and a movie downtown. But guess what that means? Two days of meatloaf sandwiches in my lunchbox. That's going to be amazing. I hope you try this recipe, folks. This is the absolute best meatloaf that you could ever make. It's phenomenal. 
You probably noticed there's no milk in it and all that. It's a really, really good meatloaf, and it's going to become your favorite. Serve it with some mashed potatoes or vegetables, whatever you want. So, hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us here at Mark Kelly Farm. Thank you.